Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews and more bench stuff while I'm waiting to get clearance to fly and just as well because so much stuff has come in that I've uh, ordered or that has been sent to me for review. Now um, one of the things that I know we've all been waiting to see is the Dragon Link. Here it is, the Dragon Link. This is the long range, UH, long range UHF system and they've sent me one to review so they must be pretty confident that it actually works. And Next I'll be putting this on the bench, running it through the same tests I put the RMILC system through. And of course also doing some flight tests, which hopefully will be more successful than the RMILC system. They did actually include a decent antenna. See? Proper ooh, decent antenna, whereas the RMILC came with that horrible telescopic thing. So I'll be putting it through. I'll do a bench test, then we'll do some flight tests, and then maybe a, a summary or review. And also, while I'm here, I also ordered from Hobby King, it arrived pretty quickly, is the Orange Open long range system. Now I know a lot of people ask me to uh, review this. So I ordered one and I'm going to test it. Now it's not really going to be a long range system in the way that this is. And that's mainly because it's only 100 milliwatts. 100 milliwatts, a tenth of a watt. That's the same as your 2.4 gigahertz systems. It will be slightly longer range than the 2.4 gig systems if only because the path loss will be lower. And what that basically means is as you go down in frequency from 5.8 to 2.4 to um, 900 to 433 megahertz, as you go down, the air appears more clear. It appears clearer to a radio signal, so you get less loss between a radio transmitter and a receiver. So if you have a transmitter here and a receiver here and a fixed distance, as you go up in frequency, then more of the energy being broadcast is actually absorbed by the air and the atmosphere around. It's called path loss. So the higher the frequency, the higher the path loss. So as we go down, we'll get longer range for the same power, all else being equal. And I mean, all else may not be equal because Antenna efficiency is important. If you've got high gain antennas, which are much easier to make for high frequencies, you can overcome the path loss thing. So it gets a bit complicated. I'll go through, maybe I'll do a whiteboard diagram and explain all this sort of stuff to those who want to know. But yeah, open range system from long, long range system from Hobby King. Now, one thing to be careful of, when you get these little whips, see they come, this is, how do you know that's not 2.4 or 900 or whatever? It always pays to put a bit of tape on here and write the frequency. Put it on the base so it doesn't affect the tuning and write the frequency on the piece of paper so you don't think, oh, is that from my transmitter or is it from my video transmitter? What is it? So just a little tip. As soon as you get these things, write the frequency on them so you won't get confused because if you put a 9 or 433 megahertz antenna on your radio transmitter, you may run out of range with unfortunate results. Well, there you go. That's the UHF RC gear that we're coming up. The test will be coming up soon. I've got a pesky little fly here. Look. And just get rid of those. It's autumn here, but the flies are still going. It's still quite warm, so the flies, oh, damn it. Anyway, enough of die, die, fly. Now you see that? You pick the can up and they go away. How about that? Never mind. He'll come back. Uh, so anyway, if we're going to UHF for our radio gear, it opens up some new doors for video. Now normally we can't use 2.4 gigahertz video and RC at the same time because the 2.4 gig transmitter, your radio control transmitter, will basically stomp all over your video signal. And the further your model gets away, the worse that's going to be because you'll have a weaker video signal, but your RC transmitter will still be working relatively close to your video receiver. So generally speaking, people don't use 2.4 gigs for their RC gear and their video. But if you're going to go UHF, then you can use 2.4 for your video equipment. And you can only use relatively low powers legally though because the 2.4 gig band says you can use it, like in New Zealand here, we can use I think up to four watts, but only if you use a frequency hopping system or some other form of distributed spread spectrum. So, oh man, that fly will die. Um, so you're stuck with relatively low power levels to do it legally. And so what I've done is I ordered from Hobby King, got this little, I think it's a 150 milliwatt, 100 milliwatt 2.4 gig transmitter, still in the bubble wrap, matching receiver and cabling and so forth. And I'm going to try that out. 100 milliwatts isn't very much. So with the standard rubber ducky antennas or little whip antennas, you're not going to get very far. Well, they might be surprised how far you do get compared to 5.8 with 100 milliwatts. But what I'm going to do, of course, is I'm going to use high gain antennas as well. So we'll put this transmitter in a plane with a standard stock whip and then I'll hook this up to the receiver. And this is, a, of course, a Yagi antenna. These are very high gain. This is 18 decibels. That's top of my head 15 times gain. So it, that's the equivalent of this thing running oh, 1.5 watts, isn't it? No, 100 milliwatts. Yeah, 1.5 watts. So, you know, if I was using just the little whip antennas at each end and 1.5 watts, I'd get the same ranges with the 100 milliwatt and this antenna. So there you go. 
Antennas are the secret to good, um, reliable video signal. Good antennas, good gain, much better than running lots and lots of power. So anyway, I'm going to do some experimentation. We'll do some tests, and then you'll find out, just as I do, if the textbooks and the practice coincide or, or match up. See what goes on. So yeah, um, that's something to look forward to. 2.4 gig, first time I've reviewed a 2.4 gig video system. I'm not going to bother reviewing the camera. It's a cheap little Hobby King, you know, one of those horrible little CMOS cameras. Not very nice. But they're okay, you know, for a budget entry, that's all right. But I'll, I'll hook it up to the Sony 600 TV line so you can do the comparison. Because the other thing, of course, is the image quality is good. 5.8 is superb because there's not much noise on 5.8. As you go down to 900 and so forth, it starts getting a bit noisy and sometimes the picture looks a bit rubbish. But 2.4, what does that look like? Well, I know that Trappy uses 2.4 for his video and uh, Team Black Sheep, they use that and they have their own brand of um, Yagi, which is a damn sight better than this. This is just a cheap Chinese one made of old uh, deck chairs and, I don't know, bits of sunk boat or something. It's just, you know, quite rough and ready. I doubt it would actually do 18 decibels, but I'll measure it. That's why we've got the spectrum analyzer. I can measure this, find out how much gain it's got. That's what we'll do. Um, yeah, so Trapper uses that and he has good results. So maybe it really is a good way to go. So that's about it. What else have I got? Nothing much, really. I think, um, yeah, that covers it. I got, no. Nothing else looking around, can't see a thing. So there you go. I shall um, dilute the blood in my caffeine stream a little more and get on with reviewing all this stuff for you. So stay tuned and uh, come back soon because there will be, very shortly, there'll be um, all this bench stuff. Uh, even if I can't fly, I'll do the techie stuff for you with a few more how-tos as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again very soon on RC Model Reviews. Bye for now.